Sean Ford is the superintendent of the Purchase Line Schools. He is on the line with us this morning. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Sean, good morning to you. Good morning, Todd. It's good to have you with us here today. Hey, serious topic. Um, United announcing today that their school is going to be uh, shut down the high school for Wednesday and Thursday for deep cleaning, sanitizing. Uh, you had to do something similar with your schools last week. This COVID thing is still tough to deal with, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Todd. It's um, you know it's a week by week basis. We had a we had a number of cases um, last week. We had the point where we reached our threshold, and um, yeah, we shut down Thursday, Friday, and then over the weekend. Um, same reason we did our deep cleaning, um, you know, and uh, hopefully. As of right now, knock on wood, um, we don't uh, have currently have any new cases, so that's a positive. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I know that you hate to do things like that, uh, number one, from the educational standpoint, but number two, you're here in the um, last days of the school year. There are still a lot of things to do. Athletics uh, are, are going on, extracurricular activities like that, and you're thinking about proms and graduation ceremonies there's still a lot of planning that has to be done and i would assume that that means contingencies in case the original plan doesn't work out yes absolutely we have you know we did get through we got we had our prom the first weekend in may and uh so we were and it was you know, it was a very nice evening and boy it was nice to have it was nice to have that event after missing that last year um but no we still have you know we have the musical that we had to um, bump back here later in may we still have two concerts. We have graduation. Um, you know, we have, well, we're, we are get, we have the heritage today a track meet, and we've got districts coming up. So we've got we do have a number of things, and so you try to you know you try to weigh those um, with the you know, but there's there's only so much you can weigh when you get cases. You, you know, you got to kind of, and we've seen that happen. You know, schools have missed um, various meets, various games, and then you try to, and then you're and you're scrambling to make those games up and make those activities up and reschedule so absolutely so and we've and we've got you know we've the seniors are going to go on some um, day trips this year instead of uh, overnight trips we're going to do some day trips um, we've got sixth grade promotion you know so no we've got a lot of activities left between now and the end of the year yeah you know that's interesting that last thing you said about the uh, the sixth grade promotion uh, yeah. It's it's just a short little distance between the elementary school and the high school, uh, and yeah. it's it's good to be able to talk about actual educational things. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. It's just a short walk, but it is a big step for those kids to go from sixth grade into the high school building, isn't it? Absolutely, it's you know it's an, it's a transition, and um, and we do we have various um, you know transition activities in place from a you know the parents have a night when they can come in, and then we. We um, we do things in seventh, when the kids get here in seventh grade, and so um, but no, that's a that's that's a big jump. And I I actually graduated from a seventh through twelfth school also, so I've kind of been familiar with this uh, model. Um, you know, we're not I've never been in one where we had a middle school. You know, as a buffer, yeah. we we went right from a K to six into a seventh through twelfth school. And I remember I even remember myself in seventh grade. That was that was quite a jump. And so we try to be cognizant of that for our kids. And then throw in the fact that you know education has been disrupted over the last year and a half, and it, it is quite the transition for those kids. Yeah, I remember well, I did the same thing. I went to a seven to twelve school, and I remember walking in for that first day, even though it was over forty years ago. Uh, and and you walk in, and our, our lockers were right next to the seniors. Well, there I am. I'm five foot one inch tall, and I weigh <laughs> I weigh sixty eight pounds. And you're next to a football player who's six feet five, and he weighs two hundred seventy five. That's kind of intimidating for kids. So you have to make special efforts for those kids to make sure Ab that they feel comfortable. Absolutely, and you know we 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 take we we have meetings at the beginning of the year, even with our older students, and say you know be leaders, be mentors. And and you know and overall we we really try to match up our younger kids with our older kids to make that transition um, you know as seamless as possible. But um, no, that's a, that's it is scary when those when the kids come here. And what we do here, a lot of our a lot of our um, seventh grade classes are upstairs, so in our second floor. So we do try to have a little bit of separation, but cafeteria is all in one place and, and, and so that we can't do it completely but we do try to do a little bit of separation here yeah. um, that way get them blended in hey school board yeah. met last night and yeah. um, of course the budget is always a big topic 
Um, yes. I don't think people really realize what goes into fashioning a budget. You and your uh, your school district business manager and the various principals who get involved in in fashioning a budget. It's an awful difficult task, isn't it? Sure. We you know we actually start in December of the previous year, and then we we have various timelines. We spend. January going through, you know, from departmental budgets, and then you know we we have a we have a system here where they come and they present to the business manager and myself. We go through each of those, um, and and we start crafting that budget, you know, in the January February, and and, and then we you know come back and the business manager, um, you know, starts looking at all of our various expenses and revenues, and and so no, it is it's a difficult, and it's made even more difficult this year. Um, because of the pandemic and even some of the uh, funding from the federal government, um, there's many unknowns out there. And so we're trying to craft a budget um, with, with a lot of unknowns. And even some of our projections that, you know, we try to do projections to see down the road one year, three years, five years, those projections because, you know, you use past practice for projections. Well, when you're not in school, some of our expenditures, you know, went down last year, um, but some of our revenues. So it's it's been a challenging budget year for sure, and I, I think every school would tell you the same thing. I mean, we're not the only school, but it's been very, very challenging. But um, we did pass a preliminary budget last night. Um, right now we're at a zero um, tax increase um, in that proposed budget, um, and, and so we passed that last night. And just, you know, for folks who don't understand what uh, a spending plan is and what it takes to run a school district, uh, they might think, oh, our Indiana County school districts, we're not the great big uh, Pittsburgh city districts. Uh, they're not uh, they're not tons of money, but uh, just give people an idea. What's the funding uh, level in, in that budget for a small Indiana County school district? We're sitting right. We're in a, and this is going to be an average, Todd. But our, you know, next year we're looking at a budget of right around twenty million dollars. Um, so um, it's a it's a twenty million dollar budget, um, and and so yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a big budget. I mean, you know, we have a you know we have one hundred and fifty plus employees, and and so um, no, it's it's not a Pittsburgh school with a hundred hundred million dollar budget, but twenty million. You know, that's that's a big amount, mm-hmm. and so we take it. We take that very serious. We try to, you know, we always we always. When I first came here, we put kids at the center, and we say that we want to try to budget according to our priorities and our goals with students. And then if you if you kind of go out from that circle with kids in the middle, when we look at cuts and we look at things that we have to do, we try to be furthest away from students when we make those. And, and that's what's unique to a school district budget compared, you know, we're not making a, we're not making a product. We're, we, we're, we're educating young minds, young leaders to be the next generation. So um, I, I try to always bring it back to that. And we've tried to merge our budget with our educational practice, and we do that by setting priorities each year, and we say we're going to fund our priorities. And so that's, that's, how, that's how we go about it guys here at Purchase One. Yeah, it's a great responsibility, and it has to be taken absolutely seriously. Of course, uh, this year, uh, the technology budget, I would assume, went up big time in, in the 2020-21 school year. I would assume that uh, a lot of those times uh, of those costs are, are taken care of now and that you could uh, have a little bit more normal in the technology end. But even that... Those every new piece of machinery, every new electronic device, and those things have to be maintained. So you have to keep up to date on that. Yes, you know we were, you know, that's we we were able to our our actual line item budget and technology is a little lower here in twenty one twenty two budget because we were able to secure a lot of those devices and those things because of the pandemic, and we used some of the initial um, ESSA funding um, for that. And so that, you know, that was, we, we've been able to do that in this budget, but that's not to say we don't have a line item in there in technology because, like you said, um, we're, we're starting to collect devices and we'll see, you know, you know how many repairs we have to do and, and then let alone we have to keep up with our, you know, we keep, we, we're always adding access points. We do a good job out here of applying for grants, um, and we get various grants, and we're constantly putting access points, constantly looking at ways to continue to upgrade our technology. And I think that's a yearly, technology changes so rapidly 
that, you know, school districts tend to be a little bit behind even some of that, so we try to keep up with that in our budget every year. I want to let you get away without asking you this question because this is something that we're learning from all of our Indiana County school districts. Uh, they are very, very concerned about what's going to be happening in the summer and plans for students who might have fallen behind during this school year with all of the special challenges sure. uh, that have been involved there. What's Purchase Line's plan for the summer? We have kind of a multi-faceted um, plan. We've got we've got uh, credit recovery going on, um, and we're given quite a bit of student choice in that. We have um, they, we're going to have teachers available. They can come here. Um, they can do online. They can actually do paper and pencil. There's actually three different options, and they can even even the students that are at home can choose to come in here, and we'll support them one day a week. We're also running a a two-week uh, summer, almost like a summer camp, a two-week camp, and it's going to be um, uh, um, technology-driven. We're going to use the Legos Education K-9, to, K through nine. and so we're having that for students, and, 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 and we're actually still looking at a couple options more. So it's kind of a multi, multi-tiered multi approach. You know, we're going to look at that credit recovery for those students. All students can come to the camp, and we're going to continue um, – just trying to, to, to have a fun experience for the kids, but also keep that education going. So, um, yeah, we're pretty excited about our summer programming for sure. And plus, we still have the Evergreen um, Boys and Girls Club that, that will operate in the summer. They have their program, too. So we, we actually have a full summer out here, Todd. Yeah, school year might end, but the work never does. Sean Ford, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate it greatly, and, and uh, everybody stay safe out there. All right, you too. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160 and AM 1160.